Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Accelerate You, where we hope to inspire and educate you on free and low-cost resources for entrepreneurs and small business owners. I'm so excited about our guest today. Today we have Dr. Sweet in the house to talk to us about nonprofit management. Um, Dr. Sweet, I I don't want to take your thunder away. Will you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Well, I am a assistant professor of business at North Carolina Wesleyan College where I teach primarily leadership and management courses but I also have a small nonprofit in Nash County where we serve parents and children in the rural communities. Um, Our primary mission is to provide a safe place for families who have experienced trauma Um, and we focus on physical abuse, um, spiritual abuse, and emotional abuse. Wow, I bet you've been really busy over this past two years with COVID. Yes. I don't think a lot of people recognize COVID has been a trauma for a lot of us. Absolutely. Um, When you mentioned that you have been an owner of a nonprofit, I know you've been an owner of Patch for many, many years. You've been the CEO and the the, the chief operating officer there, but you're not telling the audience everything. You also have some certifications from Duke University, correct? I do. So two years ago, I went to Duke University and I earned a certification in nonprofit management. It was a wonderful experience to add to my toolbox and it gave me another avenue to serve the population in which I am passionate about serving. Yes, so when we talk about resources, whether they're free or low cost here through um, the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship, Dr. Sweet is one of the people that we contract with who does a lot of work with the nonprofit management. And in addition to that, she does a lot of our workshops on grant writing. So we'll get into that in a little bit um, down the road. We'll talk about grant writing and how important that is for nonprofits. Dr. Sweet, you know, there's always a lot of mystery surrounding nonprofits, and I know that you have been a nonprofit CEO for a while. So what advice would you give our new entrepreneurs or someone contemplating starting a nonprofit? That's a great question, um, Dr. Node. I think the first piece of advice that I would give them is to make sure that they have a solid business plan. Um, The purpose of a plan is to deal with uncertainty and eliminate risk. So most people, they start with passion, they have this great idea, and that's great. But they lose momentum because they don't have a solid business plan in place. So that would be my first bit of advice. And if they do not know how to write a business plan, you know, there are consulting firms all over um, the region that will assist them with that process. And then the second piece of advice that I would give them would be to make sure that they have a diverse board of directors. Nonprofit is hard work. No man is an Allen, no man stands alone. So making sure that they have people in place with the right skill set that they need to help them move their mission forward is going to be crucial to sustainability. You're absolutely right there. That board is going to be so very important. And also that plan. And I want our viewers to know that in addition to consultants, once again, the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship and our small business centers at our local community colleges can also help you write your business plan. And in most cases, we can do that for free. So that's a wonderful service that we offer. One of the things that I hear so often, and it always makes me a little bit perplexed, is when people say, well, it's a nonprofit, so it doesn't have to be profitable. And I have to remind people quite often, no, it needs to make money as well. It has bills it has to pay. It probably has payroll. It probably has employees, probably needs a handbook. It it, it, it is, in essence, everything a for-profit is. Where does that myth come from? I have no earthly idea, but I do hear that a lot, that nonprofits are not profitable. And that is absolutely not true. They have to be profitable in order to be sustainable. And you're absolutely correct. They have expenses just like for-profits. They have employees. Um, They have a budget that they have to adhere to. So they do have to be profitable. Um, And even more so, they have to be creative in how they generate that profit. You know, there are over two million nonprofits in in the United States. So it's very competitive in terms of how they receive their funding. 
And so they have to be innovative now. You know, they compete for grants. They're competing for donors. So how far can those monies go? So let's talk about that for a minute because I think you're absolutely correct. I think the traditional model of a nonprofit has most nonprofit CEOs thinking about grant writing and donors, which we both know um, those are two changing uh, fields constantly, right? Mm -hmm. What's popular post COVID, yes. what gets funding, what doesn't get funding. 2 million other folks you're in competition with. Yes. That's some pretty steep competition. So what do you recommend? Does uh, I know that uh, Patch has a, uh, a profitable arm, correct? Yes. To support the nonprofit endeavors that you have. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, we rely heavily on my experience and my credentials. So we have a consulting social enterprise where we offer consulting services to other small business owners and we generate revenue that way. And I wanna take time to say this, um, nonprofits have to be profitable just like for profits. The difference is what they do with their profit. So for profits can dis disperse their profit amongst the owners but nonprofits cannot. So we generate profit, but we have to use that profit to build our programs. We can use it to pay our expenses and to pay payroll, but the owners do not get to keep the profit for themselves. So we always have to take the profit and then um, retool it back into our programs and continue to advance our mission. Okay, so what you're saying is that the profits that you generate from your consulting goes back into Patch to help you run your programs and do your outreach and your advocacy. Absolutely, it's a social enterprise. So we do that a lot. Um, we also have um, a lot of fundraising events. So nonprofits should always be fundraising. It is something that should never go away. Um, most nonprofits, they rely on um, small fundraising events to bring in revenue, but they always have one or two major um, fundraising events that bring in a generous amount of revenue. And so fundraising should never be off the table for a nonprofit. It also sounds like what you're saying is that when I see those young people standing beside of the road with the sign to pull my dirty car in there or the bake sale or the t-shirt sale, I should support my local, my local nonprofits, my local community partners. Absolutely, because that's what they're doing. They're trying to build sustainability. And research also suggests that fundraising that has the word fun attached to it is something that is a real big um, success for nonprofits. So as you mentioned, car washes, uh, most of them have t-shirt sales that they provide and then generate revenue that way. So absolutely, yes, when you see that happen, please support that small local nonprofit because it's all about sustainability. Yeah, and wonderful. And, and once again, just to reiterate, that is sustainability in your own community. Absolutely. You're right here in Nash and Edgecombe, and I know you reach into Halifax, and I know you've come to Wayne County as well. So, but you're, you're basically here. Those dollars aren't going to New York. Right. Those dollars aren't going to Florida. They're staying right here to, set, to help in this, really this tri-county area. Absolutely. So by all means, pull your dirty car in and, um, and, and help out a local entrepreneur. Well, what advice 
you know, you've been an entrepreneur for a very long time. I know this. And you've been both a brick and mortar and a social entrepreneur. And, and you've been um, CEO of Patch for at least 12 years, I believe. Mm-hmm. But let's go back. Let's go back when you were brand new and Patch was brand new. What advice do you wish you would have received then? What would the, what would the old Dr. Sweet, the one just starting out, what would she have benefited by that you now know today in 2022? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I think if I could go back in time, I would probably want it to know that passion is not enough. I was passion driven and nonprofits are mission driven. We're not profit driven, although we have to be profitable in order to be sustainable, but we are mission driven. And so I was passionate, but I didn't have a solid plan. Mm -hmm. And so I lost a lot of momentum and I had to start over uh, many times and I made many mistakes. So having a solid business plan and building that board of directors, um, I think would have been crucial for me in the onset. Um, And then making sure that I had enough capital to start. I started with passion with no money. (laughs) Big mistake um, because I ended up having to use a lot of my own personal monies to finance Patch. So I think knowing that it takes more than passion is something that I wish somebody would have told me. Well, and I certainly don't want to be um, negative on this point, but you mentioned something, and I think our audience needs to be aware of this because I'm sure that we have a lot of viewers today that might be thinking about capital. And the truth is that the majority of entrepreneurs, it's something like 60% of us, do start our, our ventures with our own money. We don't go to the bank first. We don't go to the board of directors. We don't go to the donors first. So we are working trying to fulfill our mission, our passion, and then fund it as well. So the advice that you give is very solid um, because after a while, right, you've, you've got to make a decision and that might be difficult to pay your bills or to pay Patch's bills. So once again, just to reiterate, Dr. Sweet can help you with that business plan, the center can help you with that business plan, and the SBC can also help you with that business plan as well. Um, so where, where do you see Patch headed in 2022 in this post-pandemic world? Oh, that is a great question. We are constantly evolving. Um, as we continue to work with families, we find more needs. That is the reason why um, nonprofits start in the first place, right? They see a problem that they want to solve or they're passionate about solving. So we are evolving. We will continue to help families Um, who have experienced trauma, but we are connecting more with small business owners too, and we are offering consulting services. So we see ourselves becoming a really solid consulting firm, building our social enterprise more to help other people do what they feel passionate about doing and hoping that they can learn from our mistakes but also build on our experiences as well. Now, Dr. Sweet, I know that um, you also are an author. So if there's anybody in our audience that would like to maybe read some of your works, will you please tell us a little bit about your books? Sure. So my first book is entitled Salad Screams From Within, A Woman's Tragedy to Triumph. So I talk a lot about my personal life. So if you're wondering why I work with families who have experienced trauma, I am a victor of um, abuse. So I write a lot about my experiences and how I overcame that. And my second book is entitled Culture Shock. And so I wrote that for business owners um, in case they're wondering what all of the indirect aggression is with women and relationships. Yeah, and indirect uh, aggression. Yes, <laughs> indirect aggression. So just trying to resolve conflict. So conflict resolution, there are a lot of practical tools in that book. And there have been some managers right here in our local area Um, that have used that book to resolve conflict in the workplace. So that's a great book to read, and I'm hoping that I can do more consulting work around that because that is necessary, and it definitely helps with morale and staff retention um, as well.
Dr. Sweet, I know that you mentioned that you, if you had to start patch over again today versus 12 plus years ago, one thing you would give more consideration to would be capital. Yeah. Now in my world, capital is just a fancy word for cash. Um, and cash is always hard to come by. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that for a little bit. What are some of the ways, what are, what's some advice you can give our viewers in terms of where they can go for that needed capital to start their passion? Absolutely. So earlier we talked about donors. So building a solid donor base would be very beneficial. It certainly has been beneficial to Patch, uh, where we have donors that give on a monthly basis, and some of them give annually, an annual gift. Um, also crowdfunding. So I wished I would have known about crowdfunding earlier, but I did not. Um, but Thankful Tuesday, uh, which is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, most nonprofits are very familiar with that. Um, and that's where they can use their social media platform to reach out to a large group of donors to just donate funding to their organization. And they do that the last Tuesday um, in November after Thanksgiving. So that's been very beneficial um, to nonprofits, certainly to Patch to help us with sustainability. Um, investors, angel investors. Now we have never um, utilized angel investors, but a lot of nonprofits they do. And I don't know if you want to touch more on that, Gina. But angel invest investors, they can donate not only finances, but they do give advice and knowledge to helping a nonprofit generate capital. Um, so their mission can continue to move forward. You're absolutely right. Um, it's unfortunate that a lot of your traditional lenders maybe don't see the value um, or it just doesn't fit in their model. So they're unable to lend for, um, for your cause. So that's where an angel investor can really come in. And you know, there's, there's always angel investors out there. They're always looking for places to put their money. They're always looking for initiatives that speak to them. But you're absolutely right. They can um, give everything from advice, uh, business plan, accounting reviews, uh, right on through to that yes. capital to whether you're, uh, I've got an entrepreneur right now. She was able to secure a, a fair amount of funding for, uh, to move into a larger brick and mortar location. Um, and she did that through a group of angel investors. So it is a wonderful resource out there. You just have to be able to tap into them. Mm -hmm. But um, once again, we can help you network that and help you find a group that matches because these folks are more, um, they're more willing to give if it is an initiative that speaks to them. They're just not looking at this loan, this loan, it fits this parameter. It's more that they are on board with you and your social entrepreneurship idea. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent source as well. Now you mentioned the donors. Um, what advice would you give new entrepreneurs? One thing I always think about is starting that database. It is never too early to start that database. Start collecting those names, start collecting that contact information as soon as you get it so you can stay in contact with them. Absolutely, and you said something very valuable. Um, you want to reach out to people that can connect with your mission. So they are passionate about what you are passionate about. Absolutely. So tell me, and uh, what about collaborations? Have you utilized any collaborative efforts? Has that been beneficial for you and Patch over the years? Absolutely. Um, the small business centers at the community college, Nash Community College, uh, we utilized them when we first started. But now we are, uh, we are collaborating with the small business centers as a consultant. So they reach out to us now to assist other small businesses who are traveling the same journey that we once traveled. So collaboration is big. Uh, we also collaborate with other nonprofits who have resources that we don't have. No one organization can do it all. So I mentioned that we work with parents and um, children in the community. We provide direct services in the form of support groups, um, and we also have mentoring programs, but there are so many other things that we need, that they need, that we do not provide. I'll do that one over. Um, Go with there are so many things that they need. Yeah. There are so many other things that they need that we do not provide. So being able to collaborate and network with other 
Um, nonprofits that have those resources and provide those direct services have also been beneficial to the clients that we serve. So we are big on collaboration and networking and partnering with other agencies. Speaking of collaboration and networking, you have a few events coming up where folks might be able to still have time to get involved in. I believe April 12th, you have a leadership program kicking off? Yes, in collaboration with you, Dr. Gina Node. Um, we are facilitating a leadership program that is offered through the chambers, but we are the facilitators. And I will be facilitating from a book entitled The Leader Who Has No Title by Robin Schammer. So I am looking forward to sharing um, some great information with our leaders in the community from that, from that resource. Mm -hmm. And that program starts April 12th and that will kick off here at North Carolina Wesleyan in the Dunn Center. Once again, if you need any more information about that, our information will come up at the end of this program. And you also mentioned that you are now a mentor for the folks that used to mentor you. How does that make you feel? That's gotta be like the home run. Absolutely. You know, nonprofits are all about creating value and giving back. So we create value, we create social impact, um, not only in the communities that we are located in, but we also get to give back to those who have helped us. So I call it paying it forward. So that's my opportunity to pay it forward. Absolutely, absolutely. That's such a great motto. So once again, if, if any of our viewers would like to get in touch with you, tell us how, how can they do that? Other than calling WHIG TV, what's your contact information? Well, um, yes, we have a Facebook page. The name of our Facebook page is parentsandtheirchildren.nc. Parentsandtheirchildren.nc. We also have an Instagram. And the name of our Instagram page is at Dr. Katrina Sweet. And believe it or not, my students created a TikTok page. And the name of the TikTok page is at lavette.sweet. So that's at L-A-V-E-T-T-E dot S-W-E-E-T. Well, Dr. Sweet, thank you so much for coming in today. You've really given us some uh, invaluable information and resources for our viewers. So I mm -hmm. hope that they will reach out, and I hope everyone has found this beneficial. And um, thank you so much once again, and I will see you all again next week.